to body. Oh shit! No, 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 no! Come on, come on! Don't. Well, I didn't flip it. Let's look at using a hotel stick to drive a ground vehicle in Star Citizen. This might seem like a stupid idea at the beginning, if you hear it the first time. Because why not use a steering wheel or just use the keyboard? But let me go through the options that a player has. The first option you have as a player is using mouse and keyboard. The, the problem with that is that you, you lack the precision of fine control over acceleration steering. And the opposite end of that is um, the steering wheel and maybe some pedals. They, the problem with that is it's quite expensive to, to buy it. And the second problem is it takes space uh, in your gaming, uh, your gaming table. So if you are flying a large ship and you had a you had a ground vehicle in it, so you park your ship somewhere, you hop out of your seat, go into your ground vehicle, and start driving it. Then you have to switch from your hotel setup to your steering wheel. And depending on how much space you have on the table, that might be a problem for you. So the middle option is um, having a hotel stick and just um, using that one for, for driving. And I think it's going to be more fun than you might think to use it. So first, let's take a look at the key bands. I'm just turning down the wind a bit. Okay. First, we're going to check out the mappings. We go to key bindings, advanced controls customization. And remember to switch to keyboard mouse from keyboard mouse to joystick holders. Also, when you save your configuration, you go to Control Profiles, you click on Save Control Settings, and you type in a name. And my my profile I use is called Caracol One. And every time you want to overwrite this particular um, preset, save you have to click Save Control Settings again and type out the name exactly as it is to overwrite it. And I recommend doing it regularly because sometimes you forget to plug in your stick, you start the game, and the game tends to reset the bindings or use some default bindings. And if you don't have an up-to-date um, save of your bindings, you might have to reassign some of them. And I will also post the link to my profile uh, below the video in the comments, in the description rather. Okay, let's take a look. Um, unfortunately, ground vehicles don't have the same wide range of mapping settings that you would get for flying. So I recommend going to the forums and pestering Cloud Imperium games about it. Because I think some important settings are really missing. So the first thing we're going to do is check out Ground Vehicle General. There's actually nothing interesting for me. It's all default settings. None of those systems is something I would need on my stick. I just use a keyboard hot, hotkey for that. So the only important settings are in Ground Vehicle movement for mappings. <clears throat> The first one is drive forward backward. It's your acceleration uh, backward driving. I bound it to my y-axis on my stick. And the y-axis, that's your cyclic stick back and forth. And that seems kind of weird to use the cycling control stick for acceleration. The reason why I'm using the cyclic stick is you have more precise control while holding a stick for acceleration than you would have on a lever, on a lever button or maybe on your left hand if, you, if you're right handed. But more about it later in the curve settings. Um, then we have turn left, right. I got it on slider one. Now this is a tricky one depending on what stick you have. I got a Hotas Thrustmaster X and it has a tilting lever on the back of the throttle, which means if you rest your hand on it, your three middle fingers basically rest on some type of mini rudder that you can use. And that's ideal for a steering um, situation. Now, if you don't have that, try to find an axis that you can hold for a long time and you don't have to strain yourself too much to, 
to do it. Because you're going to do a lot of um, small amount steering, you're going to hold it, you're going to adjust it, and maybe let go sometimes to drive straight. Okay, let me go break, button 10. That's the same as on my flight control settings, button 10 for space brake. Fire buttons uh, are default. Then I got dynamic zoom on button 6 and boost on 7. That's the same as for my flight settings. So I don't have to mentally think about a different setting when I'm reaching for the button to do that. Okay, now our joystick curves. On foot, flight, turrets. Now, unfortunately, the most important settings you want to have here are missing on ground vehicle. You only have for view, pitch, and yaw, for which I do not need a curve on my stick because I'm not using a stick to look around. Um, ground vehicle moving backwards, forwards. You could use a curve here to have more fine acceleration control in the low ranges. For example, you could open that, you can set it like this. And the, the way it works on a curve is like, if you move the stick this amount on a one-to-one -one curve setting, a 1.0, then the stick in-game is gonna move this amount. It's basically one-to-one. -one. And if you increase the curvature in that direction, you basically get more fine control, which means if your stick is here in, um, in real life, in-game, it's not going to be here, it's going to be here, which is about a fifth or a sixth of what you get. The advantage of that is you get much more fine control in the low ranges of, of driving. But you lose it um, somewhere in the mid and top range. You still, have, you still have the full scale of it. If you need to go hit the pedal max, you just pull the stick completely. But you're losing precision in between. So it kind of depends if you want one-to-one -to -one precision or if you want to have more fine precision in the slow amounts. For driving, I like to leave it at 1.0. Now, what I would like to have is curvature settings for steering. However, they don't exist in the game yet. Because um, if you want to steer a vehicle, you really want a huge amount of precision in the small, tiny amounts, so you can correct for the lane you're driving. Okay, did I miss any settings here? Yeah, that's about it for the mapping settings. Now let's take a look how it works in game. If you have fine control of vehicle by using your stick, basically pull it back slightly, as slow as you can. You can drive it really slow if you have to. Accelerate it, holding the stick. And the reason, the reason why I am using the stick for and pulling it back for acceleration control is that, as I mentioned, you have it's easier to have fine control over using your whole hand by holding the stick. And I think it's easier to pull back on a stick because the way the anatomy of your hand works, you grab the stick and pulling something towards you gently for a long time, which you might do when you hold a pedal for like a small, um, small amount for a long time, is easier than pushing it away from you. Because if you push away, you have to rotate your wrist very slightly and angle your palm and press against the stick. It's just a small amount, but it gets tiring over a few minutes. And you do a lot more accelerating than slowing down in this game or in any driving game. So. I think the better option is to pull it back instead of pulling forward. So that's the reasoning why I'm using that. Now let's see if I can drive up that hill. Again, steering control is mapped on the rudder. I can see I can finally turn on if I want to. Accelerate a bit. I think just having this tight control of the acceleration already makes driving, uh, I think, a lot more fun for the player. I'm not going to pretend that driving is super amazing right now. I think it's still missing some good suspension physics and some delays from acceleration until the power from the from the engines gets transferred onto the, onto the wheels. But I think it's a huge step in some in, sorry in terms of just from the basic uh, keyboard driving, where you just slam your key and try to drive forward. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drive up to. Dad Richie. 
and I'm trying not to wreck the vehicle and I'm gonna make a move on myself. If I flip it over or blow a tire or something, then the mission is over and I failed. And I'm gonna upload it as it is on YouTube, which means if I fail this one, that's what you get. Yeah, let's add some speed. I think there's a, bit, there's a huge amount of potential if they get the driving physics a bit more realistic than just driving up some random hill for 20 minutes can be so much fun that you don't even need a mission to actually play it. So now comes terrain driving, that gets interesting. A lot of players complain about um, there being too many rocks on planets, or too many too many things getting in the way when you're driving. I think like some of that is is a good concern to have. However, most of it, in my opinion, is that players are simply stuck with driving with the keyboard, or they haven't experienced joystick driving it, so they just drive at full speed all the time, and there's rocks everywhere. And if you're driving with your pedal taped down. And you, all there's rocks to dodge. You're not going to have much time, not much fun to actually drive. But let me demonstrate how driving feels with the keyboard. And if you want to drive slow, you have to tap it. So you, there's no way you can actually drive this thing slow if you, if you don't have a stick or steering wheel and pedals. switch back to our stick setup. See how that feels. Even if you don't not start driving, if you just have like one or two percent of the throttle, you can feel the engine starting to work. I think that alone already feels much more fun than to just keyboard driving. You can finally steer away from this rock. Get some more speed. Now, what I really like about this vehicle is that it's sort of realistic um, in terms of the slopes it, it can drive up. Like more than 30% or something, you will get stuck, you can't drive up because the engine power isn't good enough. The thing that's realistic because it creates a situation where you have to actually plan ahead how to get up a terrain. Like you can't just um, you can't just go up a slope at any any um, amount of sloping. You really have to plan ahead with which you want to take. Also, you can't see shit. Oh, that, that part where you can't see shit driving through a small um, a snowstorm, I think it's I think it's part of it, I like it. Losing orientation and stuff. See if we can get up that ridge. Uh, imagine myself having a mission, imagine there would like a crashed ship on some hill slope, and you would have to recover a corpse for insurance. You have to drag the ragdoll into your Ursa and drive it to a medical station somewhere in New Babbage. And if they would um, make it a bit less forgiving for ships to land on slopes, like make it more dangerous, then you would actually have to use a vehicle to get around like that. Imagine you have to park your, I don't know, 890 jump or other vehicle, other ship in the, in the valley, and then you drive up with the Rosa. And then you already have like a complete immersive exploration situation where you you have to go through terrain, you have to manage temperature, you have to manage your driving. You have to find a good landing spot for your plane. I mean, basically it has all of all the things you might need for a mission to be excited about. Okay, where am I? Oh, the engine is already struggling. This looks beautiful, look at this. I think the engine programmers did a really good job on uh, the way things look um, outside of direct sunlight at daytime. Oh, it's gonna be tricky.
So, about the oh shit! No, 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 no! Come on, come on! Don't! Ow. Well, I didn't flip it, so 